CataractCoach.com, a resident's first pupil expansion ring. Here's some helpful pearls for learning how to use this device. Now, certainly, a larger pupil is helpful. If you look at this pupil, you think, wait a minute, do you even need a pupil expansion ring? Of course, you don't. If you're an experienced surgeon, but if you're a beginning surgeon, it's good and helpful to learn how to use all these devices. So in this case, maybe the patient has some Flomax, Tamsulosin, Floppy Iris. So again, now the resident surgeon here is putting a little small aliquots of viscoelastic underneath the iris in the areas where the scrolls of the pupil expansion ring are going to be placed. So there it is. There's the expansion ring being loaded up. Now these come in two different sizes. Make sure you get the size that you want. And let's see the placement here. So I like to lift up the incision before putting this in there with the chopper on the other hand. And so you see how it hits the incision there? You want to use the other hand to lift up the roof of the incision to give yourself a little more working space. More viscoelastic is always good. I'll take more viscoelastic. But just the design of that tip, meaning so the tip has like a ledge on it. So it's a little easier to get it in there. Next time, use your chopper and lift up that incision. Not this. This is just shoving it in there. If you're catching it, you're going to cause decimate attachment. Careful. Now, here we go. All right, it's in, in position. Let's center up the scope, please. Center up the scope, dear resident or registrar. There we go. Here you go. There's the leading scroll caught on the iris margin beautifully. Let's see the two sides. Here's the right side and the left side. Get that angle correct. Beautifully done. You could even have that last scroll placed if you put your second instrument through the side port. But let's place it here. That looks great. And center it up. No, nope, almost. Let's see. Now you've hooked it. Beautifully done. Very nice. You want to learn how to use these devices before you have that really tough case. So I like the idea here. Now aspirating out the viscoelastic so you can probably put some tripan blue dye. In. There it is. Some tripan blue dye. Now remember, if you're a young resident or registrar, I've got a whole series of things for you on cataractcoach.com, including a free PDF book. You'll have to leave YouTube for a minute and go to the actual cataractcoach.com website. A ton of resources just for you. It's all free. Now, here we go. Time for the Rexus. Now, the nice part here is it makes it easy to see for your capsular excess, and you've got a nice guide here. Now, this resident's doing a fantastic job. Not sure how many cases this resident has done, but to me, it looks like at least a couple hundred. So I'd guess probably 200 cases in. Here's some hydrodissection. Now, don't prolapse the nucleus out of the bag because you may dislodge the ring. So keeping that nucleus in the bag, it's spinning very nicely. You know the saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. But this was spinning pretty nicely. Now, getting that phaco probe in there, you're really damaging that incision. You've got to be much more careful on that incision. You will one day get a bad decimate attachment, so be careful with that. Now, let's see a groove down the middle. I'd aspirate some of that lens cortex, too, the anterior lens cortex, to give yourself a better view. So here comes a groove down the middle. Now, they're good, good, good groove. And are you going to do a stop and chop, perhaps, then? Not sure what that chopper is doing way over there. And okay, yep, look at the crack in half now and rotating it. And now a chop. So look at the little stop and chop. Nicely done. Got good hands here. We've obviously sped the video up. The slow parts of the video are 2x, and this is 4x. So we really want to get through the whole case. So the case in real time was probably 18 or 20 minutes. And again, aspirating these pieces out, good control, keeping the eye pretty much in primary. Hey, the draping is pretty good too. So we like this. Nice case here at the end, getting all those pieces out. Careful that posterior capsule. All righty, now time for the IA probe. So let's see the cortex removal. Not a whole lot of cortex remaining. and clean that up pretty easily. And then once that's cleaned up, let's get the lens in the bag. And let's see the technique then of how to remove the Maliugan ring. So if you're going to use these pupil expansion rings, don't wait till you have that really difficult case with a shallow AC and a super tiny pupil. Yeah, learn to use it in a case that's not so bad, like this case. I think that's a smart move. When you're a young surgeon in training, learn as much as you can, as much hands-on as possible. Okay, enlarging the incision there as well. Let's see why. Perhaps for a higher power lens. And so there comes the lens. Looks like um, there it is in the injector tip. Advance that lens. Oh, maybe got stuck a little bit. Is this maybe one of the high power lenses? Sometimes, remember, these injectors don't always have the same size tip. Even with the same manufacturer, same lens, same brand, same everything, you may notice that they have different size tips there. And that's because a very thick lens, like a 30 diopter lens, is going to need a little bit bigger tip than, let's say, a 20 diopter lens or a 10 diopter lens. So there's the lens in the capsule bag. Let's slow the video down at 2x speed now. And let's see how, yep, gently taking those scrolls off of the pupil margin. Nicely done, and leave that ring in the anterior chamber. 
And now going in with the injector, you can grab onto it. You can actually grab it anywhere. Let's see the technique here. Grabbing it right there, okay. And then you just withdraw it and it goes back in the injector. These are single use, so you can just throw it away at this point. Very nicely done. Now it's time to remove viscoelastic. So obviously remove the ring from the eye when the AC is still full of viscoelastic. It makes life much easier. Now going behind the optic, remove viscoelastic and get this centered up. So beautifully done here. Now see the little bit of iris tissue there? Yeah, that's normal. You can get a little bit of damage to the iris by putting a ring in the eye. And that is to be expected. Make sure your patients understand and know about that. Beautifully done case here. Please leave a comment below if you have any helpful suggestions. My most important takeaway point is be easier on that incision.